Okay, so this is my main server right here. So today we're going to be putting in these two 3TB SAS drives, as well as these two 128GB Kingston SSDs. Um, the drive that's in here right now, it's 2TB, and uh, it's hitting about, I think, 9 years of power on time. And there's only one of them, so there's no redundancy at all. And with the amount of use it's getting, I'm not trusting it anymore. It's, yeah, 9 years, time to change it. Let's go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is this HP server here, I've got Proxmox backup server installed on this memory stick. So we're going to start this up and get that installing. So what I'm going to do is restore all of the VMs from the server downstairs and put them onto this. So that way there's two copies because this is my backup server. So there's already copies of them on here. But I'm going to make another copy onto this server just so that they're in two places. And then we can restore them from one of the two and bring them back onto the new server with the new drives. Okay, so you can see here I'm installing Proxmox backup server. Um, this won't take too long. And uh, now that we're transferring over the data, it's doing about 18 megabytes a second, maybe a bit less. Um, we'll have two copies of all of the VMs so that we can restore from either one of the two servers. Um, and then we can, well, now that we've put in the new disks, uh, we've always got redundancy so we can't lose any data, fingers crossed. Okay, so now I just need to remove these two drive blanks. And then I think it's that direction. You say, yeah, there you go. There we go, that's those in, and then we can put this cover on back there. Okay, so while I'm here, I'm also going to put in this Cooler Master Fail Place. This is some really old, but um, if you would have seen the video where I upgraded the CPU in this, I'll put a link in the description and up here. Um, the Fail Place is pretty bad, so I'm going to use this because I think my thermals are a bit high. So I'm going to change it for this. Yeah, no wonder they were high. That has not, that's just evaporated. It's gone. Okay, so I've just put in the two SATA cables. I'll neaten them up a bit later. And um, they're a little tiny bit shorter than I'd like, but oh well. And um, we do only have one SATA power cable though. So I've got this uh, SATA splitter um, for the drives. So we're gonna put them in. And then the two drives will connect like this. There we go. There you go, drives have initialized correctly and they are showing up in the thing, so we've got to go and create virtual disk now. There you go, so we've got our virtual disks, so it's in RAID 1, so they're just a copy of each other. So if one drive fails, we've still got some redundancy, because um, the SSDs are going to be in RAID 0, so there'll be no redundancy on the SSDs. Um, so everything will be installed on the SSDs, um, and then they will automatically back up to these drives, which will be redundant. So I can go ahead and... Click OK on that. Yep, and there you go. Three terabyte disk. Okay, so that's uh, now done. This is going pretty quick actually. Um, so I just had to select RAID 0 for the disks, um, and then the rest of the installer, pretty self explanatory. And uh, there we go. It's just doing it. So far, so good. Okay, so it's booted up just fine. So I've logged in and I've had to recreate all the networks exactly the same as how they were before. Because um, that is, uh, with the backups, the data that is Proxmox isn't stored on them, only the VM settings and their actual disks are stored. So if I restore all the disks, they'll be trying to talk to networks that don't exist. So I've had to go and recreate all the networks, that only takes a couple of seconds. So now all I have to do is add the backup server to this, and then, in theory, we should be able to just download all the VMs. And there we go. Um, so we're just booting up the last VM. It's just finished. And uh, I think it's a success. Okay, so that concludes this video. Um, there was a quick issue. Uh, I copied the wrong version of the backup, so I'm kind of resyncing that now. Other than that, this process has gone pretty much flawlessly. Um, the two hard drives, um, Proxmox didn't want to quite initialise them. But uh, we got there eventually, um, it, it, all things considered, it went through pretty quick, um, which is surprising because it never does with me. Um, 
just uh, going to end the video on uh, just going to say a massive thank you to all the people that have subscribed and that are watching. Um, we've passed 118 subscribers now. We've gone, we went sailing past the 100 mark, which I know is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but for you know, for just some guy who's doing quick projects and thought film it more than I could have hoped for. So um, <clears throat> if you're new here. Uh, I don't just do server and networking stuff. We do a lot of electronics and RC car stuff as well here, uh, along with RC boats as well. Um, watch it, don't watch it, do what you like. The point is, thanks for watching. Uh, if you are new and haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. Drop some comments down below, things you want to see. I've had a couple of people asking for tutorials on, like how to install Proxmox, how to install PFSense on Proxmox and things like that. So um, if you want to see that, drop a comment down below and uh, I'll think about doing it. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, so this server here, this is my main one. So today we're going to be putting in these two, two terabyte, no, they're three terabyte. Sure. What is going on with this? Ah, loud as hell. Those of you that have seen my network tour, you would have seen me install this uh, network switch. Um, unfortunately, somewhere there is a setting that is making it block a specific protocol. I don't know which one it is, but there are some things that just aren't working when we use this. So I've got the original one kind of sat on the top of here for now. Um, I either need to switch it back or work out what setting it is. Can't find very much documentation on it, so if you know of any good documentation on this particular switch, it's the D-Link DGS1510-52. You can see model number there. Um, leave something in the comments down below, even if you just know of like a video or some PDF that um, is good with the D-Link documentation, because I can't find very much on what settings do what. So uh, drop a comment down below.